the recording. Okay, we're recording. Cool. Uh, welcome everyone to the IPFS weekly call uh, for September the 16th, 2019. I am Aching Brain. I will be your host. Uh, we've got a fun-filled 23 minutes for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about all the cool stuff that we're working on. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to who is first? Terry. Terry, go. Hello. And trying to share for one second. So I just wanted to make people aware we have um, working groups, which you've seen, and we also have some special interest groups. And one of those is the local offline collaboration group, um, which I've pasted some relevant links in the documentation. But this is a group that um, Molly started and I've picked up the leadership of where people who are interested chat about how IPFS could better support um, local and offline collaboration. Um, so there are a lot of people talking about things like how we can use mesh networks to solve uh, disaster situations, those kinds of things. Um, pretty, pretty wide width, but this is one of my favorite calls. We actually do this monthly and you can find in our issue queue, you find a, an issue for each upcoming event. So for example, this week on Wednesday, We'll be talking about some of the unique needs of native communities in the US that have limited internet access. Um, last week, Giannis gave us a demo of Data Hop. We've also looked at the gathering app that was shown at, um, at IPFS camp. And if anybody wants to catch up who hasn't been on our calls, you can find our YouTube channel that has recordings. You can see we're pretty well attended. We got lots of faces in our little Brady Bunch thing. So. Just wanted to make sure people are aware of this. If you're interested in offline use cases, this is a great option for kind of that overlap between IPFS and local offline collaboration. Um, but the other thing I wanted to just call out, which is related but not identical focus, is um, the Offline First community hosts an event called Offline Camp, which the next iteration is happening in just under two weeks. So we start on September 27th, we'll be in Oregon. This is an event that kind of moves around to different places. Um, but this is a, a retreat for 30-ish folks to gather and talk about offline first use cases. So some people are using D-Web approaches. Some people are using more traditional web approaches to handle all of these challenges. But so many cool use cases to talk about. And it's really discussion-based. So we talk about um, for everything from the challenges that we're facing to specific implementation solutions to cool use cases. Um, so awesome, awesome event. Um, feel free to check that out. We do have scholarships available, so if the ticket price would be a problem for you, feel free to apply. Molly and Michael and I will be there in a couple weeks, so I'm looking forward to that. Does anybody have questions about either of these things that I can help with? Okay, that's my pitch. Cool. Thanks, Terry. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the new uh, IPFS release process. We're trying to shore up our processes, uh, introduce a little bit more rigor. Um, so we go through a number of stages. Uh, I can do a thing. Never mind. I'll just place a link. So this is the uh, the release issue, which kind of outlines the uh, outlines the new process. Um, so if you look at it, you'll see that uh, we step through a number of stages from uh, ensuring that everything runs in CI and all the tests, which is kind of like your basic level zero uh, software development. Um, but then we're going to start running the test suites of firstly internal applications and then external applications. Uh, which is going to be quite good. So at the moment right now, I'm trying to uh, fix some problems with OrbitDB that we would have caused, that we're not going to cause because I'm going to fix the problems before we release it, which is great. Um, so if you would like your uh, application to be added to that list, so you people uh, watching on the internet, please do visit the IPF, JS IPFS repo and PR your application into the early tester program doc. Uh, this will mean that we will open PRs on your repos when new release candidates uh, are available, uh, which you can then run through your own CI uh, and make sure that you're not gonna uh, 
any uh, surprises uh, and we can also then kind of assist with debugging the problems and because we know what's what you need to change so we can we can help out uh, that would be super useful anyone got any questions are you already doing this how how far are you into a release process so we are doing this uh we are this is this is the first iteration of trying it um, we are currently uh, in stage two community dev testing, though the list of community dev testers is a little thin, um, but we are doing it. So please do get involved. Any other questions? Cool. Anybody else got anything they'd like to talk about? I was going to say that there is a team in IPFS dedicated to uh, improving the response times and the stability of the IPFS.io public HTTP to IPFS gateway. Um, and one thing that happened for us recently was we enabled uh, the IPFS experimental quick support across all the nodes in the gateway. And uh, that was cool. So the gateway has to do a lot of work and no small amount of that is pulling traffic via bit swap between uh, IPFS cluster nodes that host a lot of our content and the 16 gateway machines that are scattered around the world across uh, eight different data centers. Uh, so with so much traffic going backwards and forwards, well, going from cluster to gateway, just enabling quick on both ends of that pipe sped things up quite nicely. Um, uh, quick, for anyone who isn't following along with experimental new protocols, is UDP-based quick two, two round-trip handshake, super duper, it's going to the future of HTTP, HTTP 4 or 7, I think it's going to be. Um, uh, so we enabled that, and what else is happening? Just tweaks to our Nginx config to make sure that we're doing all the good web development things, like enabling compression on web fonts, watching people's web hosting, uh, web test stats go from C to A on compression front. Uh, and we uh, there's stuff that we haven't announced yet, but things in the pipe are like public status pages around how are our gateways doing? Because we recognize that it's a really significant part of um, the, the infrastructure. And so we want people to have much greater observability into what's happening to them. And uh, and also coming up with the um, fair use policy because it is a giant public service that we run. And its main purpose is to bridge um, legacy tooling that only speaks HTTP with the IPFS peer-to-peer -peer future. So we want it to be available for everyone all the time for everything, but we want to make sure that regular, regular users uh, have a better quality of service than people who decide to release applications that absolutely hammer the gateway because they haven't got around to running their own one yet. So these are all things that are in the pipe that we're going to be working on and have been working on for the last few weeks. Um, so expect more announcements there. Nothing I can share publicly yet, but it's going to be good. Does anybody have any questions about that? Amazing. I do wonder if like, we could do something, because people always seem to default to the HTTP client for things, and they're like, oh, cool, I'll just get it from the gateway, you know, which obviously just hammers the, the available infrastructure that we have. I wonder if we could just like have some kind of thing as a service that you could, a pre-built thing you could deploy in AWS and have your own gateway. I don't know, like like a push button DigitalOcean like droplet. That would be good. Various like yeah, we definitely want as part of this endeavor. We want to make it much easier for others to run their own gateway and make it much clearer when you should rely on the gate the public IPFS.io gateway and when you should consider setting up your own and what are the tipping points for that decision. We definitely want to make all that a lot clearer for people. 
right now it's just like I don't know I've got a local gateway there's a public gateway I got a gateway Cloudflare's got a gateway so yeah um, we, we know that we want to clear up that messaging no, you just start serving adverts and the responses to the gateway right <laughs> Not adverts, I'm but I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. But doing a better job of serving up. Hey, this this lookup is taking a long time. Sorry, like either the infrastructure is overloaded or the block you've requested is no longer being provided. Maybe someone closed their laptop. You should consider trying this request again using IPFS bio rather than just kind of showing a spinner for ten minutes. It's also, you know, it's not an advert, but a, an education opportunity. Do you not know how to set up your own gateway? Have you considered Proto School? Exactly. Drifting towards advert. Jim Pick stepping up to the demo plate. He's always got good stuff to show. Okay, I don't know if this is good, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay I'm going to share my screen. One of my screens, hopefully, I share the right one. Okay, you should see a lot of, of black windows here. So, what I have here is um, basically I've built a version of Go IPFS um, from the master branch, um, but I've added um, um, when you run, when you run um, IPFS, there's a, a little hidden command that nobody knows about. Uh, was it IPFS? Um, Repo log, no, log, logs, I don't know, log tail. So yeah, you can see there's a bunch of stuff that gets, you can tail and uh, see all these little JSON events that get spit out by your IPFS daemon, which is not really useful to anybody, but you can hook up a program to read all those things. Um, and so what I've done is I've, added some extra events and then I've created a little program called IPFS spy. It's a Node.js program. And um, so when I go to um, download something, so I'll just, uh, I could just clear up my, so I'm going to download docs.ipfs.io. And if you watch the screen here, while well, it's, this is, I'm going to get it. And then I can watch what's going on in my IPFS node. So you can see, this is the, the CID I'm trying to download. Um, and it started by doing some DHT queries for um, basically the content behind docs.ipfs.io. And it hasn't successfully completed, like it's done these DHT queries, but they've timed out in 10 seconds. Um, but if it, if it found some DHT things, it would show the peers here. But also there's a lot of random peers connecting to my node all the time. And you can see this this line here, advertise want list to some of my incoming peers. So peers are always trying to connect to the node because uh, they're trying to do DHT queries. So if every time a, 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 a peer connects, it'll say, hey, do you have this thing I'm searching for, which is the docs.ipfs.io. So even though the, the DNS queries are not succeeding, so it's going to try DNS query here. Um, if I wait long enough, something will connect. So yeah, you can see two peers here just connected and I'm downloading from them. You can see the download stats. And here's a peer that it found via the DHT. So this is one it found from the DHT. So, um, and then you can see it's downloading things here and you can see down here, it's sort of stuck. Um, so it's gonna keep doing DHT queries here um, and try to find the next block, if you can find it on the network. Um, but you, you can watch this and you can see the current state of the, um, the network is a lot of these DHT queries aren't succeeding. So, um, but you can see it's still downloading here. Um, and, but you also see that it's downloading a lot of duplicate blocks. So that's why the, um, it's being a lot of effort downloading things that it already has. So, but eventually it's going to hook up to one. So it's only downloading pretty slow here. Like you can see the, the bit rates, but it's downloading from several peers. So this will complete. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. And these little stars mean these are the, um, 
asterisks are these are the peers it's actively connected to at the moment. So, so it's still downloading from this peer here. Why does very it very slow uh, speed? Why does it download duplicate blocks? Um, this part of the bit swap algorithm, and um, Dirk had a good uh, IPFS weekly call. Was it last week or the week before? And he went over the algorithm and uh, some fixes he's got for that. So um, by design, the bit swap um, algorithm tries to get some duplicate blocks. So anyway, so I finished the download. So um, and then it says done up here when it's done. So um, and um, I, I hide these DHT queries after a certain 30 seconds or so. So um, but you can see. These are all the peers that were involved, and you can see how many blocks are downloaded from each peer. So, um, so that's my um, IPFS spy, and I'll, I can post a link to the source code. So. Hey, Jim, what did you have to modify in Go IPFS? Did you add additional logging? Or? Yeah, I just added um, just extra events. So the, those little G JSON things, I already had a bunch that it was kicking out, but I needed specific ones in specific places in order to build this particular user interface. Um, but I didn't actually modify any of the actual um, actual operation of IPFS. I just added extra little hooks so it kicks out little events at certain points. So it seems like it might be harmless to fold that back into master. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, was, I, I didn't really, I was sort of learning the code as I was going along. So I just sprayed these all these events all over the place. So I think it, to put them in, there is a performance impact to logging a lot of stuff. So I would, I would to do the, the fine grain logging I'm doing, I would want to have it sort of like dynamically enabled only when you're displaying the UI because uh, it's going to slow things down. Um, I, probably like 1%, but you know, I, I still wouldn't want to have the in performance impact. So I think it'd be something to be considered carefully. So yeah. just, just, Jessica has a hand. I just this is this is super nifty, and I think even just from like an introduction to D web sort of perspective, seeing this happen, um, I think could be incredibly useful to to people who are really just sort of learning how this works. I mean, we can we explain this conceptually, but seeing it line by line like that is is really interesting. And I don't know, you know, sort of Terry, what your thoughts are, but um, some sort of some sort of tutorial based around this could be very very interesting to discuss later on. Yeah. Anybody that's familiar with uh, like BitTorrent clients, a lot of them have like a really good view because you're yep. sitting there waiting for the illegal movie you're downloading you know, to finish. And <laughs> you know, yeah, and exactly. you can see all the different peers and who you're connecting to. It's it's fascinating. Like you don't really know who you're connecting to, but you know, you can sort of right. see that something's going on under the covers well. Yeah, and at least to have the visibility as to like why something is being slow, um, which is which is a problem that you know, and I think Eric, yeah, Eric, you just posted something like about this in the chat as just an indicator of why something is slowing down. Um, you know, it's it's visibility. Um, I think there's probably a lot of really cool stuff we could do with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd put it under the umbrella um, term of observability and making sure we have that in there, and like we could maybe add a little bit more than just a, a simple download status indicator on the on the terminal and uh, th for things like web ui you can get really crazy with in terms of the the amount of um you can like drill down and you know what this one i'm downloading from you know how, just focus on that one and so. Um, hello. Um, would it be an option to carry out any measurement work based on that? And um, try to understand a little bit the behavior and where things are getting slowed down or stuck or... Whatever. Yeah. The reason I did this is because I'm working on the, the test infra team and that's the, the primary task we're going to be doing is like figuring out how to test all of these things at scale, like spin up thousands of nodes and have them talking together in a controlled in manner and then measuring everything that's of interest. There's so much data, it's, that, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, I know, but even with this, I mean, you can get a first good insight of where, where is some problem, where is the problem in the process, no? 
yeah, like this is nice because it's just real time. You can see, oh, it's trying DHT queries. They're not returning. Yeah, exactly. uh, you know, you can see, oh, it's, it's doing bit swap with these different peers. It's like, oh, it resolved this DHT one, but it's not talking to it. Like, you know, there's, I didn't even add everything I could add into this, but it becomes difficult too because it's just like there's so much information inside the system. Like, how do you surface it into the UI? It's already a little bit too confusing for the uninitiated to, to view it, but. Um, yeah, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's a challenging UX issue, I would say. Um, but it's 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 great that all the data is there and that you can just tap into it and surface it. So, I'll, I'll post. Uh, I'll dig up the link and um, post it. Um, the, the source code, so anybody can just. Um, you have to build a a, a modified version of IPFS, but. Uh, Didn't you do a video demo of this? recently somewhere or like a I, I post or something i posted it in our uh, internal slack but i didn't um circulate it externally so cool. um, but... totally on the internet now <laughs> uh, we have two minutes left on the call um has anyone else got anything to share I want to hear more about Abhix, uh devices storing like data on the network from from IPFS. Tell us, tell us about it. Sounds really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So right now it's very batch. I have, let's say, these are little strap-on motion trackers. So I got eleven of them. They go on various parts of my joints, and they're streaming at ten frames a second. And I was thinking about, OK, that's reasonable for sockets. However, I am reduced the difficulty of my problem by saying, like, OK, I will just update IPFS in like big chunks of data. Like, here's a full minute of data up on the network. Here's a full hour of data up on the network, and then parse it out that way. Because I didn't really know the best way to do real-time kind of work but so that's another office hours kind of question but yeah the goal is to take real-time sensor wearable data from whether it's heart rate position or the sort and then pipe that into services that you're running on your local machine and have sharing with other nodes that you would like to interact with, whether that uh, whether they're providing you with services or whether they're your mom who wants to know you're alive. And yeah, that's the goal. I don't have a presentation or anything today. Anyone got any questions about that? Sounds cool. Will you come and present on it in the future? Yes, of course. And if anyone wants to know about hardware, electronics, or lower level stack area, I love to talk about it. It is a subject very dear to, to our hearts. <laughs> well, we're, we're building a bridge. Cool. Uh, it is half past. Uh, that is the end of our scheduled time for the IPFS weekly call for uh, the 16th of September. Uh, I, thank you very much, everyone. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.